The SR Manuscript, Volume 2, an accumulation of three years' research and writings on the topic of semen retention. If you wish to physically own the works of the ancient archives, then this book is for you. Being born a man into this world gives you both a major advantage and major disadvantage in life. The advantage is testosterone and all the traits that come with it increased vitality, strength, muscle, cognitive benefits, aggressiveness, productivity, and so on. The major disadvantage is lifespan. The extra juice you are squeezing from life through the help of testosterone comes at a price to your longevity. Men across nearly all species live shorter lives than women. Life and death is often seen in black and white, either alive or dead on or off. Although each creature contains different levels of this life substance, there's no precise way to measure how much life exists in each person. However, we can make general estimates of remaining life force based on their age. Most younger people have more life reserves and older people have less. I want you to ask yourself, if you were a candle, would you rather be a small flame that burns for longer or would you rather be a brighter flame that burns out quicker? Which candle would you consider to be more alive? Consider the female. Due to the absence of testes, women have significantly lower levels of testosterone and on average, tend to live longer than fertile men. Testosterone is often said to shorten lifespan, but it also fuels virility, drive and intensity in men. You could say it makes his candle burn brighter, but it also burns out faster. The hormones produced from the testes give men all the manly traits and features, his power and intensity, courage and aggressiveness, all those traits that man is most known for. Perhaps you could say it makes his flame burn brighter, but it comes at the cost of his longevity and thus men age faster and die sooner. The testes are extremely energy intensive organs. They demand large amounts of energy and nutrition to function and produce sperm. This is also true of hair. Scalp hair growth is metabolically expensive. Having both robust hair growth and constantly active gonads is like trying to grow two plants in the same pot. They compete for limited resources. When the testes are highly active, they may divert energy and nutrients away from the hair. Since hair isn't essential to survival, it's often the first to be sacrificed. This is usually attributed to excess DHT, and rightly so. Studies have shown high frequency of sexual activity to be linked to higher androgenic activity and increased DHT. Whether the root cause is DHT or lack of blood flow, both workings seem to stem from excessive gonadal activity. This may help explain why eunuchs and most women, both of whom have low testosterone activity, rarely experience pattern baldness. Then we have the man who is constantly stimulating himself and ejecting his seminal substances from his body. The production centers of his gonads are in constant overdrive whilst his seminal secretions are in constant depletion. He reaps neither the fruits of manhood nor the fruits of longevity. He pays the price of overindulgence. Even when the male and female organism are in perfect balance, the male will still age faster. This isn't a flaw to be corrected. It's part of his design. His male hormones, particularly testosterone, drive strength, virility, aggression, and reproductive energy but they also accelerate his speed of aging. You could say it's the price of being a man. I believe the chaste man strikes the perfect balance. He is virile and energetic, yet does not expend his resources needlessly on sexual gratification, and as a result of this conservation, receives the dividends of greater health and longer life. A chaste man may engage in sexual congress with his wife on occasion, though if he is practicing semen retention, 
he should refrain from release and prolonged sexual excitement, as too much may lead to epididymal hypertension, or blue balls. Returning to the candle metaphor, I don't wish to dim my flame just to extend its burn, nor let it blaze so wildly that it burns out too soon. I choose balance. I have no desire to drain my masculinity to its last drop in the name of longevity, nor to squander my vital energy in pursuit of fleeting pleasure at the cost of life itself. It is not the sexual impulse that must be suppressed. It arises on its own, uninvited. What matters is how we respond. When it comes, we must not feed it with lust or impure thoughts. For when desire is inflamed by imagination, it stirs the gonads into overdrive, triggering the secretion of semen or plasma and setting the whole reproductive system into motion. Also, while testosterone may have a negative impact on longevity, it is also important for bone growth, cognitive function, muscle mass, and I would go as far as to think it puts the charm into the man. The fertile man has much testosterone running through his body. This provides him the spark of virility. It gives him all the manly traits and features, power and intensity, mental acuity, courage and aggressiveness, all those traits that man is known for. Perhaps you could say it makes his flame burn brighter, but it comes at the cost of his longevity, and thus men age faster and die sooner. Remember the stallion, then think of the gelding, that is the castrated horse. The stallion is more graceful, more alert, more beautiful in form, more aggressive, dominant and higher performance, but a little shorter in lifespan. The gelding is more subdued, submissive, with less stamina, less muscle mass, less bone density and less spirit in general, but a little longer in lifespan. The third type we will mention is the chronic masturbator. They have excessive levels of gonadal activity and eject excessive levels of vital fluid. As a result, they are depleted in the source of life, and the signs are all over the individual. You can notice it in the way you notice a wilted flower, besides one that's flourishing. Remember, reproduction is the second most demanding process the body undertakes, second only to sustaining life itself. It requires at least three days to discern a pure spermatic fluid or a semen imbued with a healthy, fructifying principle. This precious gift, which is one of the first means of promoting health and cheerfulness of mind, may be so abused as to destroy the organism and become a source of torture and misery. These sexual excesses undermine health, shorten life, destroy the happiness of families, incapacitate the male from the noble office of procreating offspring and deprive woman of her beautiful mission of bearing children. 24 hours after a seminal discharge, the seminal vesicles are again full, but it takes a few more days to impart to this semen vivifying properties of a healthy nature. Not only is semen the most precious and concentrated secretion of the human organism, but its production takes place more slowly than any other. This is owing to the length of the route which the semen has to traverse. Were all the seminal canals extended in one line, it would be about 1,050 feet long. Or as Munro, the English anatomist says, 1,208 feet. This immense length shows that it is not only difficult for the semen to be reproduced, but that its excessive use must be attended with disastrous consequences to the general organism. The more forces of life conserved inside the being, the stronger his will becomes. Life force is the most important ingredient and you should do everything in your power to accumulate more of it. It will take you further in life. It will give you the power you need to carry out your plans, to achieve dreams, to fulfill your life. Anything that does not serve this purpose should be eliminated. Tobacco, stimulants, alcohol, 
all of these are destroying your soul piece by piece. Alcohol is particularly detrimental. Anything which enfeebles the powers of resistance will increase the desire for sexual gratification. Alcohol has a marked influence in this direction and almost invariably it leads to licentiousness when indulged into excess. It confuses the brain and arouses the animal passions within us. It is important that when we finally arrive at the end of life, we can look back on it and be satisfied with the progress we have made, the action we took, the others we helped. To get to the end of life with this feeling of achievement will make death all the more pleasant as it comes. To look back with only regret and waste will make death all the more miserable. You need to live a good life to have a good death. And it doesn't matter if you start late. Take action now. Chasing lust is driving down the road of your own destruction. It is literally dissipating yourself into thin air. Doing meaningful work is the most satisfying activity there is for you. It is why you are here and what you were meant for. Whether you came here to build a business that helps many people, create musical masterpieces to inspire others, or simply to care for someone with all your heart, your purpose is rooted in your creation. And you came here to fulfill this purpose, not to chase fleeting pleasure. Make yourself useful. Get your mind away from filthy thoughts. Filthy thoughts will bring impurity into your life and attract its physical equivalent. A mind consumed by lust will often go to greater lengths for sex. He may lower his standards, his caution, and open himself up to the risk of infections that the pure man would have so easily avoided. Whatever motivations you choose to align yourself with, know that your destiny will follow accordingly. The desires you serve will work to dictate the end you meet. Keep yourself pure and you will keep yourself more alive, more filled with the life principle and with more energy to carry out the Creator's will. On retention, your thoughts will exert more force, your actions will garner more attention and your words will carry more weight. Conserve your sexual energy and watch as your life begins to change. By all means, retain your semen.